an angry mob was moving towards the group of children who were kneeling together in the street praying. How could God possibly save them from harm? Well, you'll find out next on this episode of Stories of Faith. Hello and welcome to this episode of Stories of Faith. We like to tell stories about God and His power and His love for people. And with me today is Sayuri Rodriguez. Welcome, Sayuri. Thank you. Do you like this show too? Oh, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Praising the Lord is a wonderful thing to do. Amen. He is so powerful. We've been gathering stories and stories and people have been sending in their stories. And you start to read them and you go, God did that? Mm. He sent His angels to do that? <laughs> and it's just miraculous. Yes, yes. Today we're going to have a program especially about children. But before we get into it, Sayuri, over the course of these programs, I mean, we've done a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've done over 60 now. Yes. You've shared about um, your life, life of your family, and, and how um, kids have come and, uh, you know, different things have happened with children. Uh, but you said that you had uh, something to share with us today special. An announcement, yes. Yeah. Um, well, you know, my husband and I were praying that God will help us to have children at our home. Mm -hmm. And we thought one, but God always surprises us. <laughs> and yes, it's been um, at times two, three, mm -hmm. and right now we're four. What? Yes. So we have a newborn, I guess, two months old. Mm -hmm. uh, she's been with us those two months and we are loving it. We're also really tired. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you're loving a newborn, huh? <laughs> yes. It's something else, you know. I think that we're just growing old and it's <laughs> getting harder and harder. But, you know, praise the Lord because every baby is a gift from God. That's right. Oh, they're precious. Well, um, I guess we'll keep the, the audience updated as it goes along because we never I never know what you're going to say next. <laughs> so we'll have to stay tuned for Amen. more. Yeah. Well, as I said, our program today is about children. Mm -hmm. And I think the Lord has a special place in His heart for children. He does. You know, they're so vulnerable. And, um, and the miracles that we see for children, I love stories when we have stories about miracles for children mm -hmm. and, and different things like that. I'm going to have a really cool one coming up pretty quick here. Uh -huh. But before we get into it, we chose a Bible verse yes, about children. Yes, Okay, this is one that I claim for the children always, but it says... In Matthew chapter 19, verse 14, it says, Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven mm. of the little children. Jesus, when he was on earth, you'll find in the Bible, he had special regard for the children. Yes, and, and it's a beautiful thing because God, uh, Jesus came to earth to show us God's heart. Mm -hmm. People didn't understand. People have a lot of times have been confused about the love of God. They don't know what it's like. Mm -hmm. They imagine God being like their earthly father, which may not be that good sometimes. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, no, no, God loves you very much. Mm -hmm. He has regard for the littlest children. He has regards for the rich and the poor. He sees everybody the same. Everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, today we wanted to do a program that talked about children, uh, things that God has done for children. But also we wanted to talk about children witnessing. That's right. You know, a child can witness in ways that an adult can't always do. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're cute. <laughs> I wanted to start off with a story that I think our audience is really going to like. Mm -hmm. This story, uh, story started in, um, I think it's called the country of East Tim Timor. East I had not Timor. heard of it and it really threw me. Um, you know, I've been out of school for a while now. <laughs> Don't say anything. <laughs> Just a little bit. Just a little bit. And East Timor. Uh, apparently is where this happened and I didn't even know that was a country. Uh -huh. I hope my geography teachers know. Watching. watching. <laughs> yeah. But this is a story that happened to some Pathfinders. Now uh, I've said this before but a Pathfinders for the Adventist Church is kind of like the girl and boy scouts. Mm -hmm. uh, the kids get together, they have these uniforms, they teach them how to march and to mm -hmm. do drills mm -hmm. uh, which I think the survival kids like. Skills. Survival skills. And they have, um, they can earn honors, which are little tags that appear mm -hmm. on a sash they have. Like they can learn how to do knots would be right. an example of the older. Um, woodworking, 
leather working, just different things the kids work on, and they can earn these little things. That's so it is like the Boy, boy Scouts grow up, but it has a religious flavor to That's it. That's right. Were you one? Yeah, I was when I was yeah, a little boy. Me yeah. too. <laughs> and had some good times in Pathfinders. Yes, camping. Well, this, this story is about Pathfinders, and they were in this country, and I think the country's located near Indonesia. Indonesia. I was trying to find it, you know, on the map. And this story happened when a pastor decided to get 30 of the Pathfinders together to go to a village that was about an hour's drive away. Mm -hmm. So he, he arranged to have two trucks. Mm -hmm. The kids could climb in and they took them the, the one hour trip to this village. And one of the purposes they wanted to go to this village was they had three members there, girls who had be recently become Seventh-day Adventists mm -hmm. and their family didn't like it, mm -hmm. did not like it at all. And they were kind of being persecuted. So they decided we're gonna go out and see them, make sure they're okay, encourage them. So they got in the two trucks and they drove out to where this village was and they got there. And the kids did more than just check on these three girls. They went out there and they did some of their drills for the Aww. people so they could see. And they went door to door handing out, mm -hmm. I think literature. Okay. So they were doing some witnessing there of their own. Mm -hmm. And they found the three girls. The three girls were okay, but it was, it was hard. It was hard because the families didn't like it. And uh, so the pastor got together and they prayed. They prayed that God would keep the girls firm in their convictions for the Lord. Mm. Yeah. Well, the time came for the people, the Pathfinders, to leave. So the, so the pastor was like, okay, where's our two trucks? Where are the two trucks that are going to take us home? And there were no two trucks. Mm -hmm. What happened to the trucks? They said, well, you know, a couple of the parents here, uh, they're really mad. They don't like what you did. So they told the, uh, the truck driver that they were going to beat him up. <gasps> so he oh, said, I'm yeah. not driving them. Oh. I don't want to get beat up. Mm -hmm. So the pastor thought, I've got, I've got 30 pathfinders here. Right. Some oh, probably yeah. younger, some probably older. Uh -huh. What are we going to do with them? And in the end, he said, well, I'm, I, guess, I guess we're going to walk. I guess we're going to walk home. Now, their parents were waiting for them, you know. Yes. I don't know if they could get them word or what, but he decided the choice we have is to walk. And I, they estimated it was going to take seven hours. Mm. Can you imagine? Seven hours to walk. But what other choice did they have? So they started to walk, and then the villagers found out that they intended to walk back home. And they came out with sticks in their hands, and, the, and they pointed at them, and they said, you're not walking home. Hmm. Well, what do you mean by that? And one of the villagers pointed at the pastor and said, we want to talk to you privately. Well, this is a little, little concerning. Right. Uh, they're angry. They're all upset. They've got sticks. Mm -hmm. What's their intentions? What's going to happen here? And uh, he said, well, listen, I've got, I'm in charge of these 30 people. Um, if I leave, who's going to watch over these people? And they said, we want to talk to you. Oh my. And the way it went on, the pastor finally said, okay, I'll come talk to you. Well, the 30 uh, pathfinders who were left there in the road, they decided they all knelt down, mm. knelt right there on the road, wow. made a circle. They closed their eyes and they prayed to the Lord for help. Mm. Lord, help us. We don't know what their intentions are for us. I'm not sure what they said, but you can imagine. Right. Yeah. And as they were praying in a circle there on the road, they heard the villagers coming <gasps> and they were not happy. Angry voices. The villagers were heading towards them, intending to do them harm. Were Maybe, they still praying? They were praying. Mm -hmm. Maybe even kill them. Mm. Maybe even kill them. So the villagers were heading towards them and here they were. Imagine this group of younger mm. people, circle, praying, yeah. eyes closed. They could hear the group coming closer and closer and closer. Until all of a sudden, they heard them stop. Mm. And the angry voices changed from angry voices to ah, gasps, dismay. Oh. And they could hear it. They weren't watching it, but they could hear it. And then they heard the sound of feet running away. Huh. What in the world had happened? Well, not long after that, the pastor came back and he said, we have food for you. The villagers got you food. And the villagers are renting two trucks to take you home. <laughs> what in the world happened? Oh One minute everyone was angry. You know, this group was angry, right. I should say. The next minute they're being fed and given trucks to get back mm. home. What in the world had happened? They found out later. What did they find out? As this group was moving towards the children, the young people, intending to do them harm, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, a group of strong men Mm -hmm. in white robes gathered around them, huh. protecting them. Wow, praise the Lord. The villagers were so freaked out, they said, oh, we're done with this. And they turned and they, that's why they ran away. Wow. And it gave them the change of heart. 
and that's why they had food now, mm -hmm. <laughs> and they had trucks to get back, wow. is because they saw that these people were being protected. Yes, definitely. This made a big impression on the kids, mm -hmm. and it, I think it really helped their Christian experience. Imagine it would help ours, too. Oh, yes. You feel you're in danger, something bad may happen, and all of a sudden you hear that God sent angels. his elite angels, probably, Praise the Lord. to surround you and protect you from these angry villagers. Wow. That was the most wonderful thing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So we do praise the Lord that God sent those angels yeah. that day. And he used the children. He used the children. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Now we have some other stories, maybe not as dramatic maybe as not. being rescued from a life or death situation, <laughs> but still the Lord works in children's hearts. Tell us what yes, you got. Yes, he does. So I have a story of our daughter, our little Abby. She's two years old, a little uh -huh. toddler. But ever since she was a baby, uh, whenever we would carry her and take her here and there, she had this thing that she would always point with her little finger up. Really? And from the first Sabbath that we took her to church, in our church, there's this big, beautiful painting of Jesus' second coming. Mm -hmm. And I would always tell her, you know, that's Jesus, Jesus. And he's in the clouds, beautiful, right? Well, she grew up and um, before she started walking, carrying her around, um, anything that would happen, I would think, oh no, I need to pray about this. And Abby, not knowing what was going in my mind, all of a sudden she would just like point to Jesus. <laughs> and I would think God is using her to encourage me. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we, we went on a trip. We had to take a plane to go to, a, to this other place. And as we were on the plane, the plane takes off, right? And there's little Abby and she's sitting next to the window. Mm -hmm. And now she talks, well, at least she's trying to talk, <laughs> communicate. Uh -huh. And as the plane started going up, she starts pointing outside because she's now seeing the clouds oh. and the sky. And she kept saying, Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus. And people, because she's not very soft spoken, <laughs> you know, she's like, Jesus, Jesus. And people start turning around to look at her and she's just pointing up pointing mm. up and talking about Jesus. And now the Jesus, Jesus is Jesus yes. in Spanish. Yes, Jesus, Jesus. Yeah. And so for me, I believe that God is making her a little missionary as well. And she doesn't even know that she's being a missionary. She's just pointing people to Jesus. Oh, that's great. Jesus can use anybody to witness mm. for him. And I think it's wonderful to see the young children Amen. do it. We're going to have more stories about how God deals with young people and helps them and how they witness for Him. Mm -hmm. In fact, at the end of the program, we're going to have two special guests on the program mm -hmm. on the set with us. And you won't want to miss that. So friends, stay tuned. We'll be back shortly with more Stories of Faith. Better Life Broadcasting is a viewer-supported Christian media ministry that offers streaming programming via apps on various devices. Please visit blbn.org to support Better Life or to get more information. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Hello and welcome back to Stories of Faith. We've been talking about when God uses young people both in the miracles that might happen to them or in how they can witness their faith to others. And uh, Saidi, it's a topic that's on your heart too, right? Yes, it is. Because you have Very a love for much. children and mm -hmm. you've been training some of your children to <laughs> do that witnessing thing. Mm. The little babies are going to be learning soon, I'm sure. I think so. Yeah. I think she's already doing it. She's already <laughs> doing it. That's what you said in the last part of the program. Well, I came across a story that I wanted to share about a little girl who decided to witness. Now, we're recording this still during the time of COVID. And COVID began last year for us. And I came across this story shortly after it began. People having to stay at home, people having to wear masks, all these things happened. Um, there was a little girl and her name was Charlotte. And Charlotte is 12 years old. And she decided that she wanted to help and she wanted to witness. Mm. She wanted to help for COVID and she wanted to witness. Mm. So how did she help for COVID? Well, she knows how to use a sewing machine. She knows how to sew. Oh, okay. She began sewing masks for people. Aww but she wanted a witness too. So she would make a little pack and inside the pack, she'd put the mask and then she would put a glow track. Do you know what a glow track is? It's a little uh, pamphlet, very small, 
but it has some kind of Bible message in it. Right. So as she would hand this out, she'd give them something for their physical needs wow. and something for their spiritual needs. And Very she was 12 nice. years old. Children can do amazing things. They can. And you know, it's hard for an adult. If a kid comes up to you and wants to give you a present, who's going to say no? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, you got to be pretty mean. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that was a great, a great thing. Now, Saidi, you had some other ways that children have shared. Yes, and along those lines of COVID and what can the children do, mm -hmm. um, we have a family, our friends in San Jose, and the Sabbath school class, which is the class that meets every church class, right, for the children. Yeah. It's like Sunday school would Let's be for Sunday the school, but Sabbath school. Um, because the children are not able to go to church, the teachers have taken it upon themselves to make sure that the children not only are learning their lesson, their Bible verses and all of that, mm -hmm. but that they're also reaching out to others. Oh. So it's really cute because the Sabbath school, the kindergarten, I think, the class, mm -hmm. they had the children writing um, letters or cards and telling you know people, hey, I'm praying for you, things like that. Aww. And then they take those cards, one person, not the children, they take those cards to a home where there's elderly, right? Ah, and like a nursing home. A right? nursing home, yes. Yeah. And they're able to give these cards to the, the people there. And they love it. What they love the most is that it, it's not just a one time. So for every month, they've been thinking, okay, what people, what are people celebrating this month? Mm -hmm. Like this last month, they were writing Valentine's cards oh, and little love messages, love messages. Mm -hmm. Christmas, Christmas time, and all this. Every single Sabbath, they have been sending cards to this nursing home, wow. and people are receiving them. It's almost like they already know each other because of the names there. It's really beautiful. Well, after uh, this all passes by and the kids can actually go and meet, oh, the imagine, people. yeah, they'll oh, get to see they're going to love face. that. Yes, yeah. and then I have another story. A little girl. Her name is Danielita. Uh -huh. Danielita's parents are very into helping people. So they have at their church, they have a pantry yeah. where they bring food and they have food and they say, at such time, we're going to be in such street. If anybody is in need, we're going to have bags and they have food and they have different things. Um, and Danielita, she's three years old. Mm. She goes with them every single time. Well, the other day they were at home and mom said, hey, we need to go to the store to buy some groceries for them, right? But Danielita who has been going to all these outreach events, immediately thought, oh, we're going to go get food for the people. That's in her mind. We're going to get food for the people. Even though it was food for them, mm -hmm. her mind is already said that we're helping people. If we're getting food, it's because we're going to be helping people. <laughs> and so that's one way that they're kind of helping her to realize that this is how you share God's love. And that's an important point. <clears throat> Being a Christian is is an all-encompassing thing. Mm -hmm. The Lord has, has um, control of your entire life. Mm -hmm. And the one way that you help your children the most is you teach them from the earliest age that God is everything. Amen. God is why we do everything. He loves us so much. We want to love Him back. And you teach them how to witness. That's right. Um, if you try to come at it when they're teenagers, it's going to be a little harder. <laughs> but if they've learned from the earliest times that this is what we do, we sometimes go and hand out food. Mm -hmm. We sometimes go and visit the nursing home. Right. We sometimes uh, just help somebody who may be allowed down on their luck, on their right. money. And if they see this their whole life, that's what makes a lasting impression. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And another way too, in a very simple way, is um, here's another little story. Celine, she's three years old as well, mm -hmm. and has learned at home that you pray before you eat, when you go to sleep. And so her mom took her to Brazil recently. And when they were in Brazil, they would have to eat in different restaurants or something like that. And every single time, it was time to, they would serve the food and she would go to her little <laughs> hands and start praying. Mm -hmm. And then mom said that one day they went to the store and at the store, the little girl just kept saying to everybody that she would see, you know, Jesus came to this world to save you. She would say that. <laughs> she would say that in their language, Portuguese. Yeah. So we have a little video of little Celine, mm -hmm. and she's saying, you're going to hear something, and you may not understand. It's in Portuguese, but basically what she's saying is, Jesus came to the world to save. Jesus 
Eu salvou. Muito bem, linda da mamãe. Oh. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. And so, little things here and there that they repeat. They like repeating, the little ones, or just folding your hands so that you can pray. Now, you used to teach your little ones, you still do, if they're scared at mm -hmm. night, what do you teach them to do? So, I would teach them that you, you can pray, obviously, but also sing a song. Sing a song that talks about Jesus, talks about God, and my God is so great. That's one that it's always in our repertory. Mm -hmm. And we say, my God is so great, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. That's one thing. We also share with them that I'm going to lay down and I'm going to sleep because you, God, are with me, which is a Bible verse. And so little things like that, that they are able to say, God is with me. Then the next time their friends come and they go, oh, I'm scared at nighttime, they can share, well, this helps me. Oh. And so it's, it's one way to be able to share God's love. Yeah, and it's something you do over and over again. Amen. Um, so parents, if you want to help your kids, make sure your connection with God is strong. Amen. Because your example is going to hold so much more weight than just telling them what to do. Right, yeah. right. Another little story that I have that it's very dear to my heart is um, a little boy that was with us. Mm -hmm. uh, mm, about seven months ago, my dad, got, well, even earlier, my dad got really sick mm. and he was dying. Mm. And so seven months ago, my dad passed away and he's now resting. But I would say about a month before he, he died, mm -hmm. uh, we came to visit him and we had our little Abby and we also had this little guy with us. And this guy, this little kid, oh man, <laughs> he has the most beautiful smile ever. And he smiles all the time. So for <laughs> my dad, it was so wonderful because everybody's, you know, we're worried. And yeah, we would smile here and there, but not this little guy. This little guy was smiling the whole time. And you could see what he did in my dad's heart. Every time he would see him, he would make my dad smile. Isn't that beautiful? Just a smile. It doesn't have to be a speech. It was just a smile. Little missionaries. Little, right missionaries, little missionaries, yes. Little missionaries. Now you have one more story, don't you? Yes, we have, let's see, I don't know if we still have time, but we have one more story and that's of a little girl. Mm -hmm. And this little girl went to church and they were doing outreach. They were giving out books. Mm -hmm. Even Better Life here, we did, we gave out books. Anyway, the book was about Desmond Das. Yes, the conscientious, conscientious objector in the army who he wouldn't pick up guns. Right but he was in the thick of battle sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so you're gonna see a little video where this little girl, everybody was kind of shy giving away the books, mm -hmm. not her. No. She, every single person that she would see, she was giving out books. Now, sometimes us adults, if we go to give something to someone, people go, no, thank you, and that's it. Nobody could say no to this little girl. She was too cute. <laughs> she was the best Amen. little witness. Little missionary, yeah. yes. Well, you know, <clears throat> we have some guests, special guests that are gonna join us on the set today. So if you can make some room, yes. we'll have them come right on. Come on the set, kids. We're very happy to have you with us today. Now these two young people, mm -hmm. Jeremiah and Elizabeth, they have witnessed for Jesus, I understand. Mm -hmm. Well, I wanna ask you a couple questions, kids. I wanna ask you a first number question is, what is your favorite thing to do to witness to other people? What about you, Jeremiah? I like praying for people. It really, um, it helps them and God always answers. So, so you pray. Like what kind of people do you pray for? Just your family or? No, like my friends and like church members that really need prayers. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a lot of people that need prayers. What about you, Elizabeth? Well, I like singing and writing and oh. reading the Bible. Ah. Do, you, what, do you ever write poems? Um, I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can see that you like, you like reading, don't you? Yes, yes I read do. poem books though. Yeah. <laughs> Saidi, you have a question for them? Okay, so let's say that you guys have a friend at school mm -hmm. and this friend comes to you and they say, wow, you're so brave. You tell people about Jesus. I'm shy. I would never be able to do it. How would you encourage them to, do, to, to witness? What would you tell them? I would tell them that God's always with you and you have a guardian angel that would never leave you. Mm -hmm. So that would give, the guardian angel would help give them courage. Yes. What about you, Elizabeth? Well, 
I would tell them that I would go with them and Jesus is also with you. Mm -hmm. And I would try to give them some courage. Mm -hmm. I, bet, I bet your example would help give them courage. If they mm -hmm. say, well, you guys did it, I, maybe I can try too. Right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes some of your friends may be like, oh, but I can't go and just talk to somebody. Do you think there's only one way to share about Jesus or are there more ways? There yeah, is so many more ways. ways. Like what? There's like writing, singing, reading the Bible, asking them questions, mm -hmm. talking to them, and praying. That's right. Now, have you kids done anything recently to witness that you could tell me a story about? Any stories that you have of something that you did that maybe it's the way that you share Jesus? Yes, I have one. Okay. Once I was going to my doctor's office, um, I was going to the doctor. Um, the doctor asked, does a friend of yours go to work? And I said, yes, look up stories of faith. It took a little bit for her to like, get actually on it. Mm -hmm, to find it. And then we watched stories of faith and stories of faith until it showed that friend of mine. Oh, wow. So you witnessed your doctor by saying, hey, there's a program called Stories of Faith. Mm -hmm. wow. And so she was able to watch some of it and maybe she'll continue maybe. watching. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about you, Elizabeth? Well, I recently got a haircut because mm -hmm. my bangs were out of place and I needed one. Mm -hmm. So I went to the hair salon and um, she did a haircut on me. And then while she was in the middle of it, middle of doing it, I asked her, um, would you like to tell me your life story? Oh. And she said, yeah. So what I did, I listened while she was telling her whole life and how she dreamed to be a salonist. Mm -hmm. So then I asked her if she wanted to hear mine, and she said yes. So I shared a little bit about Jesus in my story <laughs> and how he cares for us and how he helps us. That was like giving your testimony. That's a good way to witness, yeah. just sharing what you God has done in your life. Talk about Jesus all the time. It's just natural. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, you two, we thank you for coming on the program and telling the audience about how you talk about and share about Jesus. It was very nice. Friends, it's time to go, but if you want to visit us on our website, go to blbn.org. We'd love to have you see what we have there. And until next time, remember, give your heart to God and do what He says, and you too can have your own story of faith. Mm -hmm.